What is an ERC-20 token? Before we get started, let's define what an ERC-20 even is, or rather, what a token is on an Ethereum blockchain. A token can represent currency, shares, loyalty points, certificates, etc, etc. When you want to create your own token, you have to write a smart contract and deploy it to the blockchain. But as we know, doing so is very risky because once you deploy it, you cannot change it. Your token may not be interoperable with another token on the blockchain, or the exchanges may not even be able to list your token for trading because it's an enormous task to be able to support thousands of different tokens on the platform. That's where ERC-20 comes into play. ERC-20, for short, actually stands for Ethereum Request for Comment. It's a guideline that defines six mandatory functions and three optional functions that your smart contract must implement. This standard lets you have a name for your token, symbol for your token, and a number of decimals to have which can be divisible when transferring fractions for your token to other people. The six mandatory functions are total supply, balance of, transfer, transfer from, approve, allowance, and the three optional functions are name, symbol, and decimals. You can create an ERC-20 token in different ways. One of the easiest ways is to use a service like the one provided by smartcontract.tools. Here, you can see here on the, on the web page here. We're gonna go to create ERC-20 on Ethereum. Then we're gonna give some details here. Um, so I'm gonna put in my example token, MAT for the token symbol. I'm gonna have 10,000 initial supply. Here I'm gonna choose simple ERC-20 so we don't have to do a whole lot of customization here. But you could also choose some other options here like if you choose a standard ERC-20, you can put your own decimals here. I'm not going to be doing that so let me go back to simple ERC-20. Here you can choose Ethereum mainnet or whatever testnet you wanna to deploy to. Um, I'm gonna choose Rinkabai testnet and then hit next. This is a test network we're deploying to so we don't really need uh, to put in the billing information from this website so we can skip this step. For the mainnet, if you were doing it, you will need some real Ethereum, uh, so to be a real Ether to be able to deploy this contract. But anyways, getting back to this, so the next thing to do is to basically make sure everything is correct and then uh, create token. Now it's gonna ask me to confirm, so I'm gonna confirm here. Um, and there's the transaction hash. So it looks like it is pending right now. After this is created, it's basically going to be live on Rinkabai testnet here with uh, the complete supply of 10,000 METs um, and the uh, smart contract address. So let me just go over here. And you'll see here that um, I can choose, so if I were to go to my address, you can see here this is the total number of total supply. Uh, this is the smart contract address. This is the decimal place um, we initialized mm -hmm. here. And um, that's about the only thing you need to do. So this didn't involve you writing code at all. So that's one of the good things about this. Second way is to implement the methods to the ERC20 interface yourself, um, which you, know, you will have to use um, something like Remix or uh, you can even code it yourself on VS Code or something like that where you're gonna need to implement the methods to the ERC20 token interface yourself. This has some downsides um, as you would need to implement all the logic yourself but you know you also have more control if you want to customize it to your own liking. Third way is to integrate um, Open Zeppelin a library onto your own smart contract then um, create the ERC20 token. So majority of the legwork would be done because your implementations of the ERC20 standard is already done through the Open Zeppelin library and it has some reusable components that you can use to build co custom contracts in complex decentralized systems. But most of all, these libraries are audited by leading security firms, so you don't have to do a whole lot of that yourself. You can see here on the documentation of Open Zeppelin, you can um, it ha you have access to various of these uh, components here you can uh, utilize into your own smart contract. We're gonna be diving deep um, into how to create um, how we're going to be inheriting ERC-20 um, here. This implements the IERC-20 interface. So this way, all of these functions here are, are automatically available to us without us having to code anything. That's the main difference between writing your own smart contract, which in, your, in that case, you would have to implement the own logic to total supply, you know, balance of transfer, all of these yourself. But if you were to use Open Zeppelin Library, you don't have to do any of that. So that's the main advantage of using that.
Let's move on to the tutorial. First, we're going to remix.ethereum.org where we can write our smart contracts. We're going to write an ERC20 smart contract in two ways, and we're going to implement the exact same functionality in both the smart contracts. One by implementing on the logic ourselves, as described by the second method, and another one by integrating Open Zeppelin library onto our smart contract, as described by the third method. First, we define pragma at the top, which says which Solidity version to use. Then, we define all the public and private variables we need to keep track of, such as the admin, which has extra control over certain functions, like when trying to mint more tokens, name of the token, which is going to be my example token, symbol of the token, which is MET, total supply of the token, which is 10,000 METs. We're also defining the number of decimals to be 18, um, as determined by the value assigned in the total supply variable. Then we move on to define two events, transfer, which is emitted on each transfer of the MAT tokens, and approval event, which is emitted when the user approves the spending of their tokens by a third party. The last two variables are balances, which keeps track of all the users who own the MAT tokens, and how many MATs that they each have at any point in time, and the variable allowances that keep track of all the approvals someone has done, which determines how many of their MAT tokens can the approved third party can spend on their behalf. Now, let's move on to the constructor where we define who is the admin. This is basically someone who deploys the contract to the blockchain. And we also initialize the initial deployer, which is the admin, to have access to all 10,000 MET's tokens in the beginning. Next, we move to the function transfer that moves the MET tokens from the caller's account to the recipient's account. We return true or false depending on whether the transfer was successful. We implement the transfer from function that moves the MAT tokens from the one account to another account, whereby the caller or the spender is actually a third party that the user had previously given approval to with the approve function. Third function is approve, which we just described, which does exactly that. It authorizes a third party to spend a certain amount of tokens in the future. This is the main difference between the functions transfer and transfer from, whereby transfer moves tokens directly without any approval, as the person who is sending the sending is the owner of the account, whereas transfer from moves tokens, whereby the person who is sending is actually not the owner of the account, but rather it's a third party. Fourth function we're going to take a look at is allowance, which returns the remaining number of tokens that the spender will be allowed to spend on behalf of the owner in the future. Fifth function, balance of, returns the amount of MAT tokens owned by the account. Sixth function, the last mandatory function, is the total supply function that just returns the total number of MAT tokens in existence. We can also implement the three optional functions, name, symbol, and decimals, which are pretty self-explanatory. Now let's implement a second smart contract, but this time using the Open Zeppelin library to do the exact same thing we just did just now. We import the Open Zeppelin library, then we inherit the contract ERC20, and then define the admin variable that will have access to certain functions like before. Then we write our constructor by inheriting the ERC20 with the name of the token, my example token, and the symbol MET as before. As part of the constructor, we're going to mint the total supply of the MET token by setting it to 10,000 METs with 18 decimal places again. Um, and we're going to set the deployer of the contract to be the admin, just like before in the first contract. And that's it. We're done. As you can see, it's quite easy to implement an ERC20 token contract using Open Zeppelin library because majority of the legwork is done for us. As a bonus, let's implement the function where we can generate new MET tokens and add it to the total, total supply. And then burn function to get rid of some MET tokens from the caller's account forever, which will reduce the total supply. Basically, mint and burn functions. We can now implement these two functions on our second smart contract with Open Zeppelin. And the way to do that is to just call the underscore mint and underscore burn function that is part of the ERC20 contract we inherited in this contract. Well, that's about it. I hope you learned today what an ERC20 standard is, how to write your own ERC20 token from scratch, and how to write it using Open Zeppelin library. Uh, now, what we're going to do is we're going to deploy these two contracts and play around them with it a little bit. First, let's deploy example token regular.soul on Remix. We can check the ad admin who is basically the deployer. We can check the name, symbol, total supply, decimals easily because they're publicly available functions now because we implemented them. Now let's send some MET tokens to another account using the transfer function. Uh, that should work. Let's do the same thing using transfer from 
function, which will fail because, as you know, we first need to have the second account approve the first account using the approve method. So let's do that now. Let's approve it. After the approval process, um, we can now send the tokens using the transfer from function. And that's how, you know, that's basically the difference between transfer and transfer from function. We can also mint two tokens. Um, sorry, we can mint new tokens with the admin account uh, with the mint function. And we can burn some tokens with our second account, which does not need to be an admin because, you know, anyone should be able to burn um, the um, token no matter what. And that's about it. So that's how you can deploy it pretty easily. I hope uh, this was helpful. Um, thank you.